being in St. Louis. I'm sorry, go ahead. I say I remember being in St. Louis, but I don't remember how long ago it was. Well, it was twice. So, the most recent one was 2006, and I think you may have come through to speak sometime before then, but I know you were here in the, in the mid-90s, or thereabouts, um, okay. to help with the, with the telescope class. Uh, in fact, uh, let's see, Wayne Clark, you might know, although Wayne, Wayne claims you remember his wife better than uh, better than you remember him. Nancy Clark says hi. Um, I just sent out an email a couple of minutes ago, or about half an hour ago, to uh, you know get some questions from some people and so on. And I think one of the better questions was if you had to do things over again, uh, if you would if you would choose to do it the same way, take the same path. Oh, I think I do things a lot of things the same way. Getting telescopes out for the public had to be done. Somebody had to do it, and I'm not yeah, sorry probably. that I did it. Well, that's nice to know, actually. And I will say um, you've inspired a lot of a lot of people, including uh, including many of my students, uh, with, that, with that attitude. So um, we're open we're open to keep that going here. We've got a pretty strong outreach. Here, so. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, it was apparently it was nearly hopeless for anybody to get a chance to see through a telescope, and I now like now it's now it's easy. Yeah, in fact, we just did a uh, an outreach program at a local YMCA um, this last Monday and had probably thirty five people come by and, and look through one of maybe six telescopes. Good. It was, it was a nice time. Good. So, uh, so you, remember, you have any memories from St. Louis? Yes, I have some memories of St. Louis, but my memory yeah, is not you. my memory is not very good about anything. Uh, well, I, if, if I traveled as much as you are, I, I can understand that completely. <laughs> <laughs> and I've lost my, yeah. I've lost my know-how how to get around in the United States. I don't know where one state is as opposed to another state. Anyway. Uh, and, I, you know, I got to thinking about it, you know, you said you were 96. Uh, we just turned 75. My, uh, my, we were, I said my eyes are 96. My feet are yeah. only 95. Right. But my eyes were already in there, and my ears were already in there before I got born. So that had to add another year. <laughs> I get it. But my eyes got wrecked. My eyes got wrecked when I was three years old. Some big kid, some big kid, got me down in the mud and rubbed mud in my eyes till it was behind my eyeballs, and the doctors thought I would be blind. Mother said it took. Mother said it took a whole week for the mud to ooze out from behind my eyeball. Anyway, my two eyes don't see the same picture. I've had, ah, okay. I've had 85 years, more than 85 years, to get used to reading the left eye picture and letting the light eye pic right eye picture go. But to see, things far, to see how far away things are, I use both eyes. Anyway. <clears throat> Recently, I, I've compared the two pictures, my right eye and my left eye. They're not the same, but, they're, but they, they sort of fit together. So when I look with both eyes, I sort of see one picture. But looking through a telescope, I always look with my left eye, unless it's a sun telescope that I don't trust. Then I use my right eye. <laughs> We're Again? predicting for astronomy for the next 75 years. For the next 75 years. <laughs> well, that's how many years we got under our belt. It was 1936 when we were, when we were, when I was born. 
If I hadn't had this stroke, I could make it for another, maybe another 10 years. I'm not sure how long I could make it. But because of this stupid stroke, I expect to leave. Their yeah. club is turning 75 years. What? Their club is 75 years old. Their club is 75 years old. Well, that's just a yeah. kid. Yeah. <laughs> I got to thinking about that. You, you have another 20 years on it. <laughs> Well, let's see, the sidewalk astronomer started in 68. I don't know how long, how right. old that is. Yeah, 40 yards, right, 43, right. Anyway. Yeah, we, uh, we actually found some original ledgers and things back from 1936 that had, um, that had all of the original members you know, logged in and so on. It's, it's kind of been fun um, going through that, that kind of time span. So what are your, what are your memories for the last 75 years <laughs> that, that stick out in your mind? You want that all in five minutes? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't, we won't have too long a time for that, so. Just the highlights. Anyway. You, you do need to know one thing. Yeah. They took me to Bryce Canyon. They had a three-night star party at Bryce Canyon. Nobody's allowed out on this big parking lot with maybe 50 or 100 telescopes, this great big parking lot with 50 or 100 telescopes out there. And nobody's allowed out there until 9 o'clock. There's a lecture from 8 to 9. This is three nights in a row. There's a lecture from 8 to 9. And then all of a sudden, there are three or four hundred people dumped out on all those telescopes. And they're told where to go if they want to see this and where to go if they want to see that and so on and so forth. After a while, that all breaks down and you can go anywhere and throw any telescope. And at one o'clock in the morning, the lights go on and you can drive home. Anyway, one of my shocking experiment, ex experiences was being at that three-night star party. There's a lecture from eight to nine. The middle day, I gave the lecture myself. I've got to tell you a funny thing that happened. Somebody asked me about photons at the end of my lecture. I said if photons were real, they'd have one in a bottle at Caltech. <laughs> Thank you. He also laughed. And you know, it's interesting. We're going back, uh, I'll be at uh, Bryce Canyon uh, myself at the end of June uh, for the Alcon conference. They're having a. Uh, Are they having another uh, star party? Okay. They're trying to tell me I did something good. <laughs> oh, you've done a few of those. Okay. Well, at least I'm not yeah. known for some awful thing <laughs> like killing well, people. Well, actually, actually, when you were in St. Louis, we can tell this story if you want. Um, you know, you like to relax sometimes, and apparently uh, the front yard of the of the um, cafeteria where we were where we were holding our meeting at Wash U. Yes, I lay I lay down in the grass and got chiggers. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, clearly the grass was pretty comfortable and you fell asleep. But apparently the Wash U guards thought you were dead. <laughs> no, no, it's just God. He's taking a nap. It's okay. <laughs> anyway. I don't think they were used to people sleeping on the grass. Oh, really enjoyed it. Oh, congratulations yeah, of, your, of your club for having yeah, lasted we'll, that long. We'll play the tape at, uh, at our banquet. Um, we'll have probably about 100 uh, people there. Uh, we'll have about 100 or so people attending. And three of the members in our club have been a member of our club for 50 years. For 50 so years? Kind of, a, kind of a major accomplishment. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, members for 50 years. So, yeah, that's, they've been around for a while. Uh, I, I thought that was kind of, kind of impressive. So, uh, yeah, anything you'd like to say? Uh, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know how old the sidewalk astronomers are by now. How old are the sidewalk astronomers? Sixty-eight until now. Forty-three. Forty-three. Well, I'm older than that. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> anyway, keep it up. Um. If the amateurs don't do astronomy for the public, nobody will do astronomy for the public.
the professionals are too busy doing something else. Yeah, I agree with that. And I have one objection to some of those programs that NASA dumps out on the public. They've repainted those, those astronomical pictures with their own colors. You see in the middle of the ring nebula, it's green. It's not blue. Okay. They, they publish it out to the public blue. It's not blue. It's green. Yeah. It's oxygen. Anyway, it's hard to pull the wool over my eyes on some of these things. I've seen some of these things too many times. And I know what some of them are. Well, yeah, anyway. You What's that? You have to see that color pretty well, too. Well, the colors aren't very bright when you look at those dim things. They don't get your, they don't get your color cells. And probably one of the best experiences I had was when Herman um, took us on a tour of the Gamma Observatory, and we got to use the 82-inch for half a night. And boy, let me tell you, uh, you got you got several photos there to mess with, uh, and put an eyeball in it uh, makes things look a little different. The um, I guess my favorite was probably the area around the trapezium. Your favorite was what? Uh, the trapezium and the Orion Nebula. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's something you can see nicely. That's something you can see nicely. There's a lot of detail in there. It looked like alpha stratus clouds. They were, they were brown and yellow and different colors. It was really neat. It was impressive. You know, the Hubble telescope was asked to study 41 stars in the Orion Nebula that are just at the time that they're making planetary systems. 41, and 40 of 41 of them have such gross radiation that they tear the atoms all apart. See, there was, there was this question about the uh, asteroid belt. How come in the asteroid belt we have great big pieces of iron bigger than a man and great big pieces of stone bigger than a man and they're separated? How did they get separated? They must have been melted. The iron has been melted. So the question is, I used to think that we had to have something half the size of the moon to get hot enough inside to melt the iron. Right. No. The Hubble, teles the Hubble telescope says that 40 of those 41 stars have so much radiation that they tear the atoms all apart and make all that radioactivity themselves. And so something even the size of a house would melt down. So the sun would have made it itself. The sun, when the solar system was being made, the sun would have managed this to get the iron separated from the rocks in the asteroid belt. You don't have to have something half the size of the moon to do it. And then that's too big to break anyway. Anyway, that's a piece of information that we got from the Hubble telescope. That 40 of, 41, 40 of 41 of those stars, almost all of those stars, make so much radioactivity that they would melt the iron down themselves. Going to Z going to Bryce Canyon with that three night three night star party. Yeah. That's that's one of the best. Well, hopefully, I can uh, I can uh, see how some of that goes this time because we'll have I think um, actually four nights down there while the uh, Alcon is going on to uh, have star parties and look at the stars down there. I'm anxious to see how that sky is. Now you can just sign off with congratulations. Well, they already know they've got my congratulations. I don't have to say it. 